do we make of the huge pullback for Oracle shares last week? Wow, this is a stunner. The enterprise software company had been one of the best performers of the year, up 58% at the end of August, kind of like Adobe, right? But then it reported a seemingly mixed quarter last Monday. Stock plunged 13.5% in a single session. Now, I think the company's doing terrific. I actually thought the quarter was okay. Uh, we'll be talking about the quarter and the company at Thursday's club meeting at noon, but don't take it from me. Earlier today, we got a chance to check in with Safra Katz. She's the CEO of Oracle in a rare TV interview coming from Oracle's Cloud World Conference in Las Vegas. Take a look. Ms. Katz, welcome to Mad Money. Hey, Jim, and feel free to call me Safra. Well, We've I... have been meeting <laughs> quite a bit, so... You are Safra from now on. Now, Safra, you're at uh, your incredible Cloud World uh, Festival. I'm going to call it a festival. And please tell me what the buzz is about Oracle. Does it include Microsoft? Does it include NVIDIA? And just tell me about what's going on there right now. Well, there is so much going on. Of course, we have thousands and thousands and thousands of our customers here, and many of them are talking about how they use OCI, how they're using our AI capabilities, how they're using Fusion. They're talking about our special relationship with NVIDIA and, of course, our special relationship with Microsoft that Larry and Satya announced last week. So we have so much exciting stuff. We don't have enough time tonight to talk about it. Well, let's talk about what happened on the day when you reported the stock had its worst day than uh, worst day since 2002. And yet you and I both know that there was a moment where we were shocked because there's so much good news. Maybe you can just refresh people about why that may have been a wrong judgment by the stock market. Well, you know, the stock market over a long period of time ends up being right. But at any one moment, it can be completely off. I mean, imagine our OCI business grew over 60 percent, our cloud business over 30 percent, our overall business over 9 percent, our earnings 16 percent. It's kind of uh, a moment. We were a little bit surprised. But you know what? We continue to grow. We continue to accelerate in our growth. And we know that our shareholders are going to benefit enormously as we continue to do our job, which is to help our customers do more, spend less doing it, and move to the cloud. Okay, so you did say at the end that your demand, level of demand is stunning. Stunning is the only word I can use. And yet when I read some research notes, including a downgrade by J.P. Morgan and a lukewarm piece by Stiefel, they're talking about limited AI. They don't see a lot of visibility. And they're surprised that if you have such strong demand, why you're not spending more on CapEx. So how do we juggle these two visions? Well, first of all, we spent a lot last year in setting up the basics for our clouds. And now as we expand, we start filling them up. And to spend just as much filling up a center as you did in the initial is amazing. It means we are filling up centers around the world with computers. And so for us, we have so much demand that we, we just keep booking it. In fact, in the first week of this quarter, we booked another billion and a half just in AI workloads. And we keep winning every single competition against others because our system's so much newer. We have access to the chips. And so because it's so much newer, it is much faster. And as you know, in the cloud, time is money. So if you can finish a workload, whether it's training an AI large language model or using it for other purposes, if you can do that faster, let's say twice as fast or often more than that, you pay half as much. It's one of the reasons that the AI startups who compete heads up all the hyperscalers are picking us. And so we're just rolling out and filling those data centers and costs a lot. But the, remember, we build our own computers. 
We've got everything optimized, and it's much, much faster. Now, Safra, I think there was some uh, disappointment uh, in the way that Cerner's uh, accounted for. I know that you had to go that radically because obviously it's not a licensed business. I know Cerner is a robust business. I have to believe that you're winning some big, some big contracts, and yet people keep saying they, pay, they spent $28 billion and they got very little in return. Can you explain to people why Cerner can pay off? Cerner for us is an opening for us to bring health care which is an enormous market into the 21st century. And the Cerner we bought is still the international leader in electronic health records. But what we need to do is both use all that data and help hospital systems and countries move all of that data to use AI and actually help save lives. So instead of the decades spent by doctors making sure billing codes are correct and administrative things are done, yes, assume that's true, and we'll continue to do that. But imagine helping save lives. And that is really where this is going. In fact, this market is so enormous that, as Larry mentioned on the call, we've been chosen for two billion dollar contracts in just the first few weeks of the quarter again for a billion dollar quarter a billion dollar contracts to bring health care to the 21st century and we have really unlimited capabilities in that area so yes we don't recognize a lot of that uh, revenue up front but over time that's where the big payoff is Remember, we didn't want to leave Cerner just as it was. We wanted to modernize it, and we're doing that with all the technology that we have right. to do uh, it. I wish people had understood that on the call. I think that was a much more succinct way than the analysts have described it. Can you explain to me, by the way, whether TikTok, which you are involved with, could end up being a big win for Oracle? None of the analysts seem to care, but if we decided in this country that we didn't want TikTok to be controlled by the Chinese, the logical company to win would be Oracle. Well, for us to remember, TikTok runs in our Oracle cloud infrastructure. They chose us after competing us with all the others and getting recommendations from other customers of ours, which allow them to run TikTok much more profitably than they would if they were in other clouds. They're in our cloud, and they continue to work with the United States government on security, and uh, we're available to help on that. Well, I think that that's a great piece of business. The final thing that I would like to know is uh, Oracle trades at a very reasonable price. Uh, you repurchased 1.3 million shares last time for, uh, quarter for 150 million, but you do have the, the capability and the cash flow is humongous here to be able to buy far more stock and be more aggressive if you would like. Even though the stock's up a lot this year, is this a good level for Oracle to be buying stock? I sure think so. As I've told you all before, we continue our buybacks, and when we get buying opportunities like have opened up in the past week or so, don't think we don't put our money where our mouth is. We've got some pretty significant plans, and of course, our, uh, our board has uh, given us permission, and of course, I also want to always guard my credit rating, which we've got plenty of room with. Well, I think we just heard the straight story about Oracle, and I'm glad we did because I did not feel that the analysts correctly described or articulated what you and Larry are up to. But you have. Safra Katz, Oracle Corporation CEO, thank you for spending the time with us. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Jim. That's Safra Katz, and Mad Money will be right back after the break. Coming up, Kramer takes your calls, and the sky is the limit. It's a fast fire lightning round. Next.